In most cases, having your Pokemon be fully evolved is better. Like there's just no debate that Garchomp is a superior Gabite. However, since there are many different tiers in competitive Pokemon, we often see not fully evolved forms of Pokemon having genuine competitive merit. And not just in the level 5 tier, Little Cup. Little Cup is great, but we're talking about level 100 today, where the not fully evolved Pokemon work on their own merits alongside fully evolved Pokemon and legendaries. There are the rare cases of not fully evolved or NFE Pokemon having their own niches that are distinct from their evolved form, and even more rarely, there are instances of not fully evolved Pokemon being better than their evolved forms. Today we're highlighting the most significant of these wide ranging examples as we explore the many uses of Pokemon that have not evolved to their final stage. Before we move forward, I'd love for you to take some guesses on which Pokemon you think is better than their evolved form, or which NFEs are just good in general. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe. My end of the year goal is 350k. When you see an NFE Pokemon in the competitive scene, you're usually seeing it act in the role of its fully evolved counterpart in a metagame where said counterpart isn't available. Of course, one of the few bonuses NFE Pokemon can boast over their evolved counterpart is the capacity to hold the Aviolite, which factors strongly into many of their niches. It isn't a universal requirement, but is the most common item among them. Perhaps the most perfect example is Rhydon, which is pretty much a copy and pasted Rhyperior. It can pretty much imitate any Rhyperior set almost perfectly. Generation 4 NU proves that it doesn't even need the Aviolite to be good at this role, as Aviolite didn't exist yet and Rhydon is still excellent. With its offensive defensive utility, tanking hits, setting up Stealth Rock, and dishing out its own brutal stab combination of Stone Edge and Earthquake. Plus, even in Aviolite generations, Rhydon doesn't even need to run the item. It's a brutal choice band user as well. From Generation 4 NU to Generation 5 RU to NU in all the generations 6, 7, and 8, as well as Gen 8 PAU, Rhydon is a perfect example of a not fully evolved Pokemon Shiny. It makes sense, of course, considering that it wasn't a fully evolved Pokemon in the first two generations, and it was a great OU Pokemon in the first two, while retaining a solid role in the tier in Generation 3. In a similar vein, Tangela is fundamentally not that different from Tangrowth. Sure, there are residual differences, like Tangela not being able to chip physical attackers just by switching in with Rocky Helmet, and not being able to learn Earthquake, but it's effectively identical in playstyle. Plus, with a Violite, it's actually bulkier physically than Tangrowth, who's already one of the physically bulkiest Pokemon in the game. As such, Tangela has been a fixture on bulky teams across a number of lower tiers. Ferrothorn is similar. It's much weaker at threatening actual direct damage in return, unlike its evolution, but other than that, it's basically the spitting image of what a lower tier Ferrothorn would be. Gligar doesn't have the same potential to threaten a Swords and Sweep as its evolution, though it still can, but like Tangela and Ferroseed, it's incredibly apt Pokemon defensively which is what led to so many viable stints in Yu Yu, like in Generation 5 where it staved off Heracross, and Generation 7 where its defogging helped make Stall nigh unbreakable. Clefairy type Null and Defog by Brava have also effectively imitated the defensive and utility capabilities of their evolutions. Usually this was a lower tier affair, but most notoriously, Gotharita, Wynot, and Diglett were so effective at imitating their evolved forms that the ensured Shadow Tag and Arena Trap as a whole had to be banned from OU. NFEs aren't just imitating their evolution's defensive capabilities, Abilities, though. The aforementioned Choice Band Rhydon wasn't a one-off exception. NFEs were just as capable of replicating the offensive terror of their evolutions as well. Sure, they didn't learn Focus Blast, but that didn't stop Haunter and Kadabra in particular from being among the scariest special attacking threats in the lowest tiers, generation after generation. And now in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Haunter's even closer to Gengar as it just learned Focus Blast and Nasty Plot. On the physical side, you have the likes of Sneasel, Thwacky, Combuskin, Fletchender, the Blade, and Girder acting as some of the scariest Pokemon in their respective tiers, and with their massive Violet bolstered bulk, Girder and DeBlade's defensive utility was substantial as well. Sometimes, an NFE Pokemon will play differently from its evolution. The fact its playstyle is different won't be enough to make it on par with said evolution, but it also means that said NFE Pokemon brings more interest and variety than just recreating familiar sets from its higher tiered, evolved counterpart. Most notably, Scyther evolves into Scizor, but its playstyle is quite different. Unlike Scizor, it's quite fast, letting it utilize its strong stab U-turn more easily, while also packing a different, excellent set of resistances. A quadruple fighting weakness and the immunity to Earthquake is invaluable. Scyther has always been a lower tier terror since as far back as Generation 2 UU, but it ascended to the next level upon receiving dual wing beat in Generation 8, Sword and Shield, which is one of the most spammable attacks in the game. Whereas Scyther becomes faster and more aggressive, Palaswine goes the opposite direction. Rather than attempting to imitate Mamoswine's offensive ferocity, Palaswine utilizes a Violite to maximize its unique defensive properties. It tanks neutral hits quite well, and Ice and Ground type alongside Thick Fat gives it a useful set of resistances, including the rare trait of being able to easily take on the praise coverage of the Bolt Beam combination. Palaswine doesn't have trouble hitting hard in return either, and uses its defensive value to support its team with Stealth Rock, which it can reliably maintain through its bulk and power. Mistrevious both was and wasn't like its evolution Miss Magius. Some 
sometimes, yes, it ran an all-out nasty plot set with offensive investment, which is similar to Miss Magius' playstyle. However, overall, Miscrevious leaned more towards bulky defensive play. This had its precedent in Gen 2 OU, where Miscrevious was itself a fully evolved Pokemon and had a playstyle entirely focused on bulk, walling Snorlax and utilizing tricks like Parish Song. Then, when a Violet came around in Generation 5, it continued that vein utilizing moves like Will-O-Wisp and Heal Bell with greater efficiency than the comparatively fragile Miss Magius. Now, occasionally, you will see a not fully evolved Pokemon who has a unique enough aspect to its game that it can be used in the same tier its evolution without being outclassed, because in certain scenarios, it is better than its evolution. The most apparent is in the case of Chansey, which outbulks the mighty Blissey with a Violet and thus the go-to option for many a stall team. Of course, it's not always better. Blissey not being relied on a Violet means it's better if it's forced to eat a knockoff, while Leftovers also allows it to not get worn down by Sandstorm. And of course, Heavy Duty Boots allows it to not get worn down by Hazards. However, there's a reason Gen 5 OU and Uber's Rain teams preferred Chansey. Its extra bulk was hugely substantial in staving off threats from Latios to Kirim White. While you may be tempted to go with Magnezone for your steel trapping needs in Generation 4 and 5 OU, don't count out Magneton. Yes, Magnezone's power and bulk is valuable, but Magneton is faster, and this is absolutely huge as it allows us to use an effective Choice Scarf set that outruns many key threats Zone misses out on. Starmie, Scarf for Dragon Dance boosted Tyranitar, Alakazam, and even Dragonite and Gyarados after a Dragon Dance. If your Mag Slot can outrun these, it allows for a ton of flexibility in both team building and battle. Next, although Diglett was mentioned earlier as an alternative to Dugtrio, there was another Arena Trap alternative that wasn't part of the Dugtrio line, Trapinch, whose ability to recreate the Dug effect couldn't be matched by either of its Arena Trap lacking evolutions. Finally, though it's not as fast and far frailer, Light Ball puts Pikachu at enormous levels of power. It has to be much more careful about picking its spots, but its far greater strength certainly can be distinct from Raichu, who it is similarly viable to. To conclude, we're going to go over the incredibly rare phenomenon of NFE Pokemon that are actually better than their fully evolved counterparts. The the best example is, of course, Porygon 2. Porygon Z plays entirely differently, as it loses bulk in exchange for huge special attacking power. But it's generally poor in this regard, thanks to its frailty, speed stat that's only decent, and a normal type in which both means its lack of resistances and a spammable stab move. Porygon 2, on the other hand, is a fantastic defensive Pokemon, with a decent niche in Gen 2 OU, a generally important one in Gen 3 OU, and the argument could be made that while Porygon Z got banned from U in Generation 4, while Porygon 2 languished in NU, Porygon 2 actually had a much more viable OU niche than Porygon Z, since with Trace, it was a great counter to Gyarados, bouncing back Intimidate, and Heatran stealing its Flash Fire. It can even check the Uber Dragon Dance Salamence in the same way. However, once a Violet enters this picture, it's no contest. Porygon Z can't take hits anymore, while Porygon 2 takes an endless parade of hits. Not needing to resist them because its bulk is so high, proceeding to easily dish out irritating status while repeatedly checking dangerous threats. It started right away with Porygon 2 and Porygon Z both occupying Gen 5 UU, but Porygon 2 being a more defining Pokemon, even seeing a lot of usage on Trick Room teams, while Porygon Z was much more niche, and it continued this way. Next, there's another normal type, Vigoroth. Of course, it helps to have an evolution that's one of the worst Pokemon in the game, since that sets the bar incredibly low, and slacking is cursed by Truant, a burden Vigoroth does not share. However, Vigoroth was quite decent in its own right. In fact, with a Violite, Bulk Off, and Slack Off, it could be thoroughly difficult to break, and was in fact so good it was banned from Gen 6 PU, as it slaughtered pretty much the whole tier effortlessly. Even fighting type struggled to beat it, not just because it took their hits, but it was slamming them hard at the same time. We'll finish off with a couple of ghost types. First, there's a Violite Dusclops. Dusclops was already quite a decent Pokemon in Gen 3 OU, then was banished to NU when its evolution Dusnor came along in Generation 4. However, with a Violite, it effectively dethroned Dusnor. Both Pokemon had the issue of not having longevity to go with their bulk, but if you're going to use one, you may as well go with the one that took hits better, and that was Dusclops. Finally, Galarian Corsola has always been better than its evolution Cursula, once again thanks to that superb Violite bulk. When Dynamax and Galarian Darmanitan were shattering early Gen 8 OU, Galarian Corsola was one of the tier's few semblances of defensive stability. It checked every physical threat between its huge bulk, Shren Sap, Haze, Will-O-Wisp, and even Curse Body. Just kidding, we have to mention one final Pokemon, an Envy that's so good it almost feels like cheating to mention it. Bisharp was an excellent fully evolved Pokemon ever since Generation 5, but in Generation 9 it has gained an evolution in the form of King Gambit, and thus Bisharp takes on a new niche entirely with a Violet, which makes it incredibly bulky, allowing it to check monstrous threats like Espathra, especially with the flexibility offered by Terrastalizing. This video is by no means a definitive statement on viable NFE Pokemon. For example, Magmar has seen VGC uses that Magmortar couldn't hope to replicate. Let me know in the comment section down below what are your favorite NFE Pokemon to use. And if you did enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And check out my previous video on how Mega Rayquaza changed competitive Pokemon forever.